Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is yet another part in my Tkinter beginner tutorial series. In this part, we're going to be talking about geometry managers or layout managers in Tkinter. So these managers, they essentially help you to position your different widgets on your screen when creating your graphical user interface. So there are three types of geometry managers in Tkinter. They are called pack, place and grid. So there are different properties to each one, different use cases and different methods in which you can use them. I'm going to be going through this in this video. So without further ado, let's get started. So in front of me, I have VS code. You can use any code editor you like, depending on what you enjoy. So I'm just going to go through some starter code that I'm going to explain. Now, if any of this is particularly complicated for you, and if it seems like you don't have a very solid understanding, then I do suggest you go back to the previous video in this tutorial series in which I go through labels, entries, and buttons. So here you can see in this small interface right here, we have labels, which is this text on the screen. We have entries, which is where you type stuff in. And then you have this, um, okay, I have a typo here, but uh, yeah, essentially another label, another entry. And then finally we have a button. So the way this program is going to work is that it's like a very small starter program. So you would take the price per item. So let's say every item that I'm buying costs $3. Then you will take the number of items. So let's say I'm buying 10 items. And if you press the button, it would calculate the total price and put in the answer right here. So it's a simple multiplication problem. I'm just doing this for example, but essentially you get what we're trying to do here. So I'm going to go through the starter code here. Again, if any of this is complicated, do go back to the previous tutorial, but otherwise let's actually get started. So I'm going to explain them in the order as follows. So I will start with pack, then I'll go through the place demo, and finally I will talk about the grid. Okay, so what do we have here? Well, first I'm importing tkinter. Next, I'm defining a function, but I'm just going to ignore this part of the code for now and go through the rest of the code and then come back to it. So after you import tkinter, you create your window, which is this window guy you see right here using tkinter.tk. Then what you do is I created all my widgets. I created a label, which is called price per item label, and it has the text price per item. So you can see it right here. Um, I created an entry. So again, this entry will have, uh, will take the text. So it will take the numbers. I created two other labels and entries, so you can see them right here. And I named one number of items as well as total price. So I won't go through what like the different parameters mean for each one because I went through it extensively in the previous video. So I do suggest you go back to that. But essentially, um, this is what we're doing. We're assigning them to the parent window and yeah. Finally, the last thing I created is a button. So this button will have the text calculate total. So I will compute the total price. And the command here is compute price. So this function that I told you to ignore previously is compute price. So what does this function do? It will take the price per item from each um, from each entry. So here you can see it has price per item entry dot get and then number of items entry dot get. So this dot get function will get this part. Now, obviously, this here you can type in anything. So this can be a string. What we do is we will convert it to an integer. So after converting the input to an integer here, we uh, compute the multiplication, then we convert it back to a string and we insert it in the entry. So insert, what it will do is it will um, add the text to this entry and we say position zero, meaning I want to insert it at the very start. All right. So you kind of get the idea. I hope it's clear now. This is the starter code that we have. Now in Tkinter, we know that whenever you create a widget and you add it on the screen, there's always two things you have to do. You have to first create the widget itself. So let's say tkinter.label or tk.label. Let's say if you imported tkinter as tk. And the next thing you have to do is you have to place it on your screen. So if I run this code right here without adding anything, then nothing will happen. Nothing will show up on the screen. We already saw that in the previous videos. Why is that? This is because you need to either pack, place or grid your widgets. So you can see here, I've added the, uh, I've added the pack function for all, um, all of the widgets that I created. So all seven of them, I think. And yeah, so I just wanted to save time. So I already pre-typed it, but let me talk about what's happening here. So let me just stop and run it again. Although we already were seeing it. What pack will do is it will just pack these widgets into blocks. And then these blocks will automatically be placed based on the available space. So pack is sort of kind of like 
a more intelligent way of um, placing everything on the screen. It does a lot of the heavy lifting for you in the sense that it's responsive. So you can see I just opened up the screen, I resized it, and everything remains centered. Everything is still in a very nice place. So this is really good. So it's really helpful if you're creating a very simple GUI. Now, there are some drawbacks in this case. So if you have a very large application, you may not have a ton of control when using pack because it does so much of the heavy lifting for you you begin to lack control and becomes increasingly harder to position and place these different elements on the screen but essentially this is how pack will work so the way you would pack stuff let me just explain the code is you simply call the function dot pack on whatever widget you have previously defined so here you can see we defined price per item label it's a tkinter.label and then I use the same variable and I call the dot pack function on it and this will create um, this interface that you see right here. There are multiple options you can use with pack. There are some options related to padding which I won't cover in this video because this is more of like a styling prefer preference and less about positioning because the positions essentially won't change. One thing I do want to talk about is um, fill. So fill here, I'm just going to go back to the button and actually let me just show you before you can see the button isn't taking up the whole space why is that this is because it's naturally smaller we haven't resized it to have any larger width so what i can do an option i have here is to type fill and then i would just say x so here i'm saying fill the x axis and obviously if you've programmed anything before you know that the x axis is always the horizontal axis the y axis is the vertical one so now if i run it you can see that the button now takes up the whole space. Okay, so you just saw an error message right here. This is because we don't have any numbers. Um, but if I just put any, ra any random number here and just press the button, you can see it still works. Okay, so it took up the entire space. Now, if I resize it, you can see now it's taking up my entire window. Another option you can use is something called side. So just for a bit, I'm going to comment out the button. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the option side. So I'm just going to say side equals left and then side equals right. And now if I run it again, you can see that I have the price per item and the number of items. And then the total price is like on the left and then the entry is, for, is on the right. So you can see that they're now on one row and they're placed on left and right. So this is another option. But regarding control, that's about as much as you can do. Now there are further options as well. Like you can, there are like tips and tricks that you can follow to sort of hack your way into placing and positioning these widgets in a different manner using pack. However, it's not super reliable and it's not super smart to rely simply on hacks when there are different and better ways that you can do it. So this is uh, for pack. So you can see Again, also, if I resize it, like they take up a lot of space. They take up the entire like um, height. So that's really it for pack. This is what I'm going to cover regarding pack in this video. Again, if you're building a very simple interface, maybe like the one we were doing. So just to calculate some price, like it had like seven widgets. It's all right to use pack. It looks good. And it, it's in fact, it's a very like nice and responsive UI. But of course, there are some drawbacks in which you lack a bit of control. But for simple applications, you can definitely use pack. These, uh, one thing I do want to note here is for all three of these guys, so all three geometry managers, there are pros and cons depending on your use case and depending on what type of application you're trying to build. So I'm not here trying to say, okay, this is better than this one. No, definitely just, um, it depends on what you're trying to do and yeah, okay. So now that we've finished with pack, next I'm going to cover place. So I'm just going to come here to the code and this is the exact same starter code that I showed you before. So we have the same uh, function for computing the price. We have the same seven widgets. So the labels and the entries and the button as well. And then we have to position them using place. So for now, what I did is I placed two of the items. So I placed the price per item label as well as its entry. Now, if I run it, you can see that they look like this. And as I said, I only placed two of them. I can place the others, but I'm not going to do it just now. Okay. So how does place work? Place works using absolute positioning. So the way absolute positioning works is that essentially your uh, screen has these like coordinates um, or actually like points, like positions. So here, this point right here, the very top left is zero, zero. So when I place my first label for x equals zero and y equals zero, this is where it will exist. 
Now, the next one, I placed it on x equals 0. So again, the x-axis is still 0, so it's still right here. And then y equals 50. So on the y-axis, I went to position number 50. I can change this around again, and I can maybe remove this 50 right here and do this. So now what I did is I placed them on the same row, so y equals 0, so they're on the same row. And the x, so the first one, the label is at 0, and then the um, entry is at 50. And you can see it sort of covered the text that we had. So we had price per item, but we can only see price per. And now even if I resize it, this will not change. So place is not responsive. So how is this working? It's placing them exactly where we're telling the code to place them. So tkinter here, they're listening to you. You're saying, okay, place me at 50, then it will place you at x equals 50 and y equals 0. Now we can also change it again to maybe b100. Now if I run it, you can see, okay, we have more space. But now like the entry is sort of outside of the screen. Um, if I resize it, it's no problem. But again, it's not responsive. It's not centered like it was using pack. So this is sort of the drawback using place. Place is not responsive. It's kind of difficult to manage your layouts because it's super like exact and you're using absolute positioning. Another thing is that it would differ on different platforms. So with Tkinter, you're building these cross-platform applications that work on multiple operating systems or, or multiple machines then your interface may look different on different machines. And this is definitely something you don't want because you don't essentially want to fall into a trap in which your interface stops looking well on someone else's machine, even though on your machine it looked perfectly fine. So these are some of the drawbacks for place. I would argue that between the three layout managers, place is definitely the least popular and it's the least used simply because of these drawbacks. And they are uh, pretty significant drawbacks, I would say. So this is essentially how you do it. You would just uh, adjust the X and the Y values. Now, let's say, for example, here, I want to also adjust uh, Y. So you can see that the entry is now here. So the way this works, again, is this is 0, 0. So let's say I shifted X by 100, and then I shifted Y by another 100, and you can see that this is where the position is. You can do this a bit more programmatically. So how can I add all of these without having to go through the trial and error? So let's say, for example, I want to add these seven widgets, but I'm not really sure how they would look on my screen. Then what I'd have to do is for every single one, change the X and the Y, and it would be like a bit tedious to do, especially as your number of widgets grows and you build bigger interfaces. So one way you can do this, I'm just going to take out this code right here and put in this code. So what do these four lines of code do? Now, the first one here, I'm simply defining a list. So this is a Python list. There's, this is not related to tkinter. This is a Python list or an array or whatever you like to call it. So it's a list. And the stuff that I put in the list are all my widgets. So it has seven different um, items and they're all widgets. So these guys that we previously defined. I put them in a list. Then what do I do? I say for i in range length of the widgets. So here I'm saying that you should loop. So you have a for loop and you loop from zero until the length of the widgets. So here we have seven widgets. So this will go from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and it will stop. It will not go to seven. What do I do? I say widget sub i. So I'm saying get me the widget at position number i. So when i is zero, this will get widget sub zero, which is this label. When i is one, it will get this entry. And then what you should do is you should place it at x equals 0, so I'm keeping x the same, but at y equals i times 20. And let me show you what this will output if I run it. So this is how the interface will look like. You will have everything at x equals 0, so here, like, it's not shifted by x at all. And then the y will continuously change for every single one. Um, I think I have an error. Why is the number of items not showing? Let me just actually check it. So number of items entry. It's actually, oh, I have it, I think. Okay, so this should be number of items label, not entry. So my bad, let me run it again. Okay, so now you can see it. So everything is on the same X, 
but on different y's. So the x here is still zero, and then the y gets shifted every single time, and we placed it sort of programmatically. Now, okay, this is a better way to do it, but again, you suffer from the same consequences of the fact that this is not responsive, this will look different on different machines, and for example, I had to do a bit of trial and error to figure out that, okay, this is going to be 20. Because let's say, for example, I placed this to be five at first, and I run it, you'll see that there's a ton of overlap. So there is some trial and error here, and you cannot just like look at it and figure out, okay, how many uh, points this will be. Obviously, with tons of experience, you will be able to look at it, kind of estimate how much you need. But what I'm trying to emphasize here is for your use case, most of the time, place will not be it. Now, if you're just building something um, like as a proof of concept and you just need anything to work for your application, you can use it. But then again, why wouldn't you use PAC and PAC will do all the heavy lifting for you. So these are the first two different geometry managers that you have in Tkinter. Now, finally, I'm going to talk about Grid. Grid is arguably the most popular and the kind of the best one in most cases. So I'm just going to explain how it will work and then I will show you the demo. So the Grid in Tkinter will often look like this. Grid is essentially a two-dimensional grid or a matrix. So there are rows and columns. It's, you can also think of it as a table. They also have these um, X, and I'm not just going, I'm not going to say X and Y because this will confuse us with um, place. I'm just going to say rows and columns. So here you have row zero, and then you have uh, column zero here, and then column one, and then you have here row one, row two, row three. And each item in the grid, each position, each cell is identified using its row and column values. So this point right here belongs to row zero, column zero. This one belongs to row zero, column one. This one belongs to row one, column zero, and so on. So you get the point. Now we will use such a grid to organize our widgets and place them and position them just like that using the grid. So let's do it. Let's go back to the demo and see. So I'm going back to the grid demo code again, same starter code, same function for computing the price and same uh, seven widgets. So in this case, we're just organizing them using the grid. So let me walk you through the code right here and show you what is actually going on. So for every time you call the grid function, you will have to specify the row value and the column value. So in place, we were specifying X and Y. Here we specify the row and the column. So now if I run this just to show you the output, this will have it look like this. So let's say the price per item label is at row zero, column zero. So here it's at row zero, column zero. You can see it's the first row, first column. Next, you have the entry. It's at row zero, column one. So it's in, still in the same row, but it's at the second column and so on. This one is at row one. So the second row, because everything here is indexed starting at zero. And then column zero. So here it's still in the first column. This one is column one and so on. So this is how you create your grid. It's pretty intuitive and it's very useful when you're trying to position your elements. Now, one thing here is it's definitely not responsive. There are different ways that you can do it programmatically, but I won't go through them through this video because it would make it like super long. But for now, this is how you organize your widgets in a grid. So what are some of the options we have right here? Well, one of the options is something called column span and row span. So I will just go here to the button. Actually, let me highlight first in the interface. So you can see this button. Okay, it fits in the first row, uh, sorry, in the fourth row and in the first column, but it kind of looks bad because it's, it's here and it's not like, it's not centered, it's not taking up any space and you have all this blank space right here. It just doesn't really make sense. What can you do in this case? You can use something called row span, uh, sorry, column span. So I will come here and say column span equal to. And here what I'm essentially telling this button is please take up the space of two columns. Let me just stop and run it again. And you can see the difference. This button is now centered and it's taking up space in both columns. So if you had the concern that, okay, now I'm using a grid, but what if all my stuff doesn't fit in a grid, then don't worry because now you can see that your stuff can fit into two different columns. You can do the same using row span in which you place it in two different rows. So this is how you would intuitively use a grid. This is like the basic way of doing it. Now there are, there's just one thing I also want to highlight is sometimes, um, actually, let me just run it again. Okay. So 
the size of the cells of the grid are not equivalent. You can see this one is slightly bigger than the labels. Why is that? This is because it will uh, take into, will take up space in the cells depending on what we have in the certain column or row. Now, if I don't place anything in a column or a row, then it will not take up any space. And what do I mean by this? So, okay, we have four rows here and I have my button in row number three. Now, what am I going to do? I'm just going to change the button to be in row number 10. And now I'm going to run it again and I have the exact same interface. So let me explain what just happened here. What happened is there are 10 different rows. There definitely are. They exist somewhere. So this is a program. It will do exactly what you tell it to do. But why did it not show them? This is because there is nothing inside of row 9 and row 8 and 7 and 6 and 5 and 4 and 3 and three okay that's it um so nothing exists there so what happens is it creates these very very tiny and sort of invisible rows that you can't see and this is why row 10 looks exactly like row 3 so just this is one thing to keep in mind when you are creating these interfaces and positioning them using grid is that this is all dependent on what exists inside of a certain row or a column now Another thing I can do, so I'm just going to change this back to three, I can mod modify the column. So I can say I want column for this entry to be 10. Now if I run it again, it's not the same, but actually placed it here. Now when you look at it intuitively, you would think this is column three, right? Or actually column two. So zero, one, and two. But again, what happened here is that there was nothing inside any of the middle columns and they all are like very tiny and squeezed together and sort of invisible to the user so this is what would happen um and also they, they're not tiny and squeezed together so i'm just saying that as a metaphor but they are definitely invisible because they have a space of zero so even if i add like ten thousand here um it's still the same so let me just run it again okay it's column out of bounds let me just say one thousand okay so one thousand so you can see again, it still looks like as if it's in the third column, even though it's in like the 1000th column. So these are all like the, the columns that are existent, but they have the size of zero, so you will never see them. So this is kind of how it works. So just do be careful when you're assigning these because creating a very like a large number of columns will not essentially show them on your screen. Okay, so that's really it for the basics of geometry managers and tkinter. Now I think you have what you need to be able to create and position widgets in a simple GUI application. So if you've been following along with this playlist, we have already learned how to use labels, entries, and buttons. So now you can create a simple form similar to the one we used in this um, video, or you can create a login and sign up form if you're creating something for users to sign in. And then you are able to position them using the geometry managers we discussed today. So that's really it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.